Before starting Pandora, Tim Westergren made a living as a musician for more than a decade. I wore a bunch of hats. I was a composer and performer, played in rock bands, uh, played in holiday inns, um, was sort of in and among the sea of you know artists just trying to make a living playing. Touring the western U.S., he met talented musicians who didn't get radio airtime and found himself wondering if he could match all that great unknown music to an individual's music tastes, thinking that led to the Music Genome Project. The Music Genome Project is certainly the core ingredient, uh, and we've been at it for a long, long time. While Pandora has an army of technical types, programmers, mathematicians, statisticians, an astrophysicist, it also employs lots of musicians, even DJs, who help figure out which songs go together. This is Jeffrey, he's a jazz trained guitarist. So he's one of a team of musicians who come here every day and have been for years and years, uh, slapping on a pair of headphones and listening to songs and analyzing them manually one song at a time along as many as 450 attributes per song. Melody, harmony, rhythm, instrumentation, voice, all make up a song's DNA. When a Pandora listener types in a song, the DNA connects that song to others in Pandora's collection. So when you pick a Pandora channel, it's the work that somebody like Jeffrey does that goes into your playlist. That's exactly right. So he's analyzing a tune right now. When he's finished, it'll get uploaded and we'll start playing in the next few days on a channel for some listener on Pandora. Westergren says the Music Genome Project gives Pandora an edge in the competitive $15 billion a year U.S. radio market. Pandora's already got more than three quarters of online listeners based on industry stats last year, but it also has some big rivals like Clear Channel's iHeartRadio. Spotify also offers web radio, and there's constant talk Apple may also jump into the fray. In the meantime, Pandora is rolling out new services, leveraging feedback from its nearly 70 million active listeners who click when they like or dislike what they're hearing. We've also begun to do things uh, where we uh, sort of geo-target uh, audience activation. So we'll find a club and find a band and then email people in the vicinity, you know, within driving distance of the club who thumbed up that band or created a station with them and invite them to a show. And you get this incredible turnout, kind of you know, out of the blue, just by using the data, using the knowledge of musical preferences and the band. And by the sound of it, Tim Westergren fans may get an email soon about a show from the former touring musician. So do you get any time to go out and perform yourself <laughs> these days? I just play by myself mostly, but I'm getting back into it now. You are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, a, I'm a pianist uh, and just started to play again and, and I plan to get back in the recording studio, so I'm excited about that.